There's been a long-term battle between animal-based versus plant-based diets on social media for a very, very long time, especially when it comes to type 2 diabetes. Let's face the truth. There's many short-term clinical studies proving the points from both sides. You see that they often show that these two diets both can lower blood sugar, can help people lose weight. But how do these diets actually fare in real life? Because real life implementation is what really matters. You want to look at big population studies. You want to look at long term studies and see how it actually affects people's health long term. So in this video, we're going to look at what the science shows, what the results are and the possible mechanisms that can cause these results and also a real life case study. In a study published in the European Journal of Epidemiology, researchers looked into what people actually ate in their daily diet and also looked at their insulin resistance, pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes incidence. And after adjusting for sociodemographic and lifestyle factors, a higher score in plant-based dietary index, which means people that ate more whole plant-based foods, was associated with lower insulin resistance, lower pre-diabetes risk and lower type 2 diabetes risk. And it's important to adjust for socio-demographic and lifestyle factors because someone can say that those who eat mostly plant-based are more health conscious, therefore they exercise more, so maybe it has nothing to do with what they ate. The point here is even after adjusting for those factors, it still showed that people who ate more plants are able to lower type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes risks. Now what about weight? A lot of people may argue people who eat mostly plant-based are lower in a BMI, therefore have a lower risk for type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. And after adjusting for BMI, the plant-based dietary index is still significantly associated with lowered type 2 diabetes risk and lowered insulin resistance, but not so much for prediabetes. And vice versa, when people ate more of an animal-based diet, they actually have higher risk for type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes, also with insulin resistance as well. Now, why is that? Let's look at the potential biological mechanism. A plant-based diet usually have more fiber, chlorogenic acids, certain amino acids, unsaturated fatty acids, and antioxidants. And all of these added together, these beneficial components may have a protective effect against type 2 diabetes. It's especially helping with obesity and inflammation. Also, fiber is known to slow down gastric emptying and glucose absorption. This can both improve obesity and inflammation, and it's been found that chlorogenic acids, which are abundant in fruits and vegetables, can improve inflammation, glucose tolerance, and glucose levels. It can even help improve increased insulin secretion. When people eat plant-based, they also eat higher amounts of unsaturated fatty acids, which is associated to lower inflammation and obesity. Phenochlorogenic acids is also reported to to reduce insulin resistance, which is the very root cause of type 2 diabetes. Another factor might be that animal protein is higher in heme iron, which has been suggested that it can increase risk for cardiometabolic diseases. And of course, animal protein also has higher saturated fatty acids and is also related to inflammation and obesity. Another interesting suggestion this study pointed out is about sodium and nitrites that may increase the risk for cardiometabolic diseases. Now, now, do you have to give up meat entirely? Not necessarily. This study used a plant-based dietary index and the higher the score of the plant-based dietary index means that they ate more plants. And also the more plants they ate, the lower risk for type 2 diabetes they had. So the point here is to eat more plants. Quoting the study here, it says that, for example, if a participant in our cohort would increase fruits intake from 95 to 200 grams per day, increase vegetables intake from 100 to 260 grams and at the same time decrease red meat intake 
from 129 to 55 grams a day, this would improve the plant-based dietary index by 10 units, which may decrease risk for type 2 diabetes by 13%, assuming other covariates remain stable. And on the other hand, there are a lot of vegan and vegetarian junk foods. And I always tell people just because it's vegan doesn't mean that it's going to help you reverse type 2 diabetes. So this study actually points the direction to eating more whole, minimally processed plant-based foods. And I wanted to talk about a real life case study. Andy, who actually was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in the beginning of this year, was able to reverse his diabetes, lowering his A1C from 10.6 to now 5.1%. I know I had an interview with him and at that time in his interview, his A1C was at 5.9. 5.8, I don't remember. But anyways, now his A1C is back to 5.1%, which is phenomenal and it only took him four months. And he did so by adding more plants into his diet. He still had meat here and there. He still admitted that he loves meat and that's okay. But the point here is to eat more plants so that it helps you reduce your risk for type 2 diabetes and even reverse type 2 diabetes. And if you wanna learn more on how I have helped hundreds and almost thousands of people reverse type 2 diabetes with a whole foods plant-based diet that is flexible, you don't have to be completely vegan or vegetarian, then make sure you watch my free reversing diabetes training. Link is in the description below and I'll see you guys there.